Yesterday was just another sad boring day until I decided to open up my laptop and pass some time. And I was just doing my thing where suddenly my laptop froze on me and I couldn't get it to work. So I did what every other smart techy human being would do and I hit the power button to force shut down the system. Problem solved, right? Yeah, no. I was just joking when I said a smart human being would force shut down their system because that can lead to a lot of problems especially if you're running that operating system on a hard drive and it turns out i could not boot back into windows again it kept going into the boot recovery menu and the advanced startup menu but no matter what i tried windows just couldn't boot up now i'm in my parents house at the moment so i don't have the necessary tools with me to rescue windows so i thought might as well let's not waste time and install an alternative os for a few days sake that is when i discovered solus a revolutionary operating system based upon linux which closely mimics windows and has a lot of useful built-in applications. So this video is going to be all about how you can install Solus and why you can probably consider it to be a daily driver OS. Now there are many different versions of Solus. Uh, I chose the uh, Solus Mate which kind of mimics a traditional desktop experience. If you want something a little bit more modern you can go with Solus Budgie which looks a lot more uh, futuristic. I primarily went with Solus Mate because the target laptop that I'm going to install it on is running on a very old hardware. So I want this operating system to run as smoothly as possible. It installs literally like every other Linux based OS out there. You download the ISO file and get Rufus. Rufus is a very fast tool for creating a bootable USB media. So you just open it, select the downloaded ISO file, plug in your pen drive and then hit start. Do note that it will erase everything on your pen drive, so it's better to take a backup of all the data which is present on the drive in case you need it. Wait for Rufus to say it's done and now you are good to go. Simply plug in this new bootable media into your laptop and boot to that pen drive by either changing the boot order from the BIOS or using boot options by pressing F8 or F9 or something like that. It changes from one PC to another, so you kinda have to explore on your own about this. Once you boot into this USB drive, uh, it's quite straightforward. Unlike uh, some other operating systems like Ubuntu, this doesn't have a separate option for you to install it. In order to install this OS, you first have to boot into it. So let's do that right now. Just boot into the OS, wait for all these cool command lines to pass you by. And once the OS loads, uh, you see that there is an option called install OS. Now since you are already booted up into the OS, uh, you don't really have to make separate partitions uh, beforehand. You can simply use the built-in tool gparted to make any kind of partition that you would like. That's one of the good things about Linux based OS. They come with all the tools you need right out of the box. Now note that if your system is running on a UEFI, that's unified EFI mode, then you will have to make a GPT partition and if you are using legacy mode, also known as BIOS mode, then you will have to make an MBR partition. If you don't know what a GPT and an MBR partitions are, then pause this video and uh, do some research on your own. I mean, come on, Linux is for cool kids. You should know some shit man. So assuming that you have figured out what kind of partition you need to use, it's most likely going to be GPT because uh, most laptops are running on uh, UEFI mode anyway. But once you have done that, you need to make sure that you have created another partition for the boot. It's kind of something you have to deal with when you are uh, running it on UEFI mode. So this ESP partition is the one that holds the boot and ESP flags. In the partition that you have assigned for uh, Solus, simply resize the partition into another 512 MB block. Once that is created, right click on the block and uh, go to manage flags. In the manage flags, you just have to select the boot and ESP flags. This is required because uh, this is where the bootloader will be stored. And this is the partition which you have to boot to in order to get to this OS. Once that partition has been set, you just have to select the other partition as your home or a slash home. Enter a username and your password to log in. And that's it, you're done. Simply restart and you should be good to go. Now Solus comes with all the uh, basic as well as advanced applications installed in it. Things that you can use every day like a Mozilla Firefox browser, VLC media player etc. Along with some other traditional Linux based applications like the terminal, system monitor, a high level file manager and so much more. There is a dedicated app store as well from which you can install any kind of software that you require. Some of them are just one click installs and others require a few lines of code which you have to write. Well, that is to be expected because um, this is not Windows. Not everything will be spoon fed to you and uh, being a user you are expected to know some advanced stuff. But it's not really advanced because just a simple Google search will get you the results that you want on how to install something. And you simply have to copy paste those commands with the right path and you will be good to go. 
well the primary use of this operating system will be for programming and uh, software engineering needs so nerds like me can use it to a certain extent but even if you are not a nerd if you just want an operating system for an older laptop or an older pc this runs phenomenally the performance on this is fantastic even with just 4 gb of ram because of a concept called swap memory this thing runs phenomenally well even when i was running the same applications that i would typically run on windows 10 like mozilla firefox it could handle itself very well when windows 10 was struggling to keep 5 tabs open this was handling 8 tabs without any hiccups so yeah i am definitely going to keep this around for a while even if i'm able to fix windows down the line you can always dual boot to this thing anyway so that's great i'll leave all the download links in the description if you'd like to do this for yourself you can check out my blog dopetechfever.com for more techy news like this until next time take it easy and i'll see you soon